What's going on guys? Christian here from CK Wraps. So today I'm going to wrap the hood on the car in a new color. It's Vivid Nightshade Purple. So this vinyl is a pretty thick vinyl. It's five mil, which means it's about two mil more than most other films in the market. Almost double, right? So that's a good and a bad thing, right? Every film has pros and cons to how they work, the thickness, the gloss, all kinds of stuff. Now, the pros I can tell you right now are that this vinyl will actually give you paint protection compared to, let's say, Avery, which is actually almost half the thickness, which is crazy, and that will give you next to no paint protection. At five mil, we're running into the territory of actual paint protection film at eight mil, so definitely higher up on the scale. Now, I did do a video on Talk and removing the hood wrap with Midnight Sun, that's also five mil. And my hood had zero stone chips. Actually, the whole front bumper had zero stone chips. Been driving it six months. I beat the heck out of my car. Don't take care of it at all. And uh, it's it held up great. So with this, we're gonna get that added paint protection. On top of that, we're able to get more flake and depth to the film when the film is thicker. When you have a thinner film, there's only so much you can do. There's only so much you can actually put into the film. With a thicker film, you're gonna be able to get more depth and more color and more vibrancy and, and all kinds of different things that are good about that, or that look good about that. Again, this is aesthetics. So it's gotta be aesthetically pleasing. And when, you're, when your vinyl has a ton of orange peel or it doesn't have that gloss that it should have, well, that's not really what you're after for the most part. I think now with the vinyls stepping up to a thicker film, it makes it a little bit harder to work with, but you get that really nice finish and you get that paint protection to go along with it. So you might find that the price point of this film is a little bit higher than some other brands out there like 3M, but you're not gonna get this the same kind of depth at all to the film. In this, what we're doing or what, what Vivid has done with these films is they've created films that, that would compete with you know, 15, $20,000 paint jobs where you're adding in all kinds of different pearls and flakes and, and just the depth to that, it's, it will cost you 15 to $20,000 for a thorough paint job, maybe even more, depending on how much flake and pearl that you put into the, into the paint itself. So, for like literally a fraction of the price, you can have your car looking like a $20,000 paint job. Pretty crazy. Yeah, the cons, a little bit thicker to work with. The new film is actually a little bit more pliable. So then uh, if it's older stuff or they're not older, it's older, but more generic stuff like, you know, they're satin red or they're gloss Riviera blue and stuff like that. Those films are a little bit more rigid compared to these new films. Even though those films are thinner, they're actually just more rigid than the new stuff. The new stuff is a bit more pliable. I'm gonna show you right now what it's like to install the hood on this car. So I have some shield guard here, and again, everything that I'm using is gonna be posted in the description below, so if you're looking for any of that, this kind of stuff, great to have. I recommend this. You can use soap and water. I like this better. It's a polymer solution. It, act, it actually lubricates really nicely, and it, and it actually puts a coating over the film which causes like relentless water beating. Great aftercare product as well. For gloss films, you just wipe it on, spray it on, wipe it off, and you're good for a couple of car washes or a couple of rains, and then you do it again. It's more of like a detail spray, but I use it to apply. It helps to have some kind of a lubricant when you're applying a gloss film, because your buffer front when you're squeegee, that little blue thing on the end of mine, is not going to drag as easy. Already this color is gorgeous. So keep in mind, right now you might be looking at it like, oh my god, it's ugly. What are all the things? This has a protective cap on it. So I'm, exci I'm excited for this. They actually were uh, convincing me or trying to convince me to do a different color and 
was like, well, wow, you know, I could, I could go with one of these other ones here. But now, now that I see this like live and in person on a large scale, it's phenomenal. Can't wait to see how it starts to look when it starts to bend around panels like uh, centers, the whole body lines that I have on, on this car here. So I'm just going to position this. And then I'm going to remove the cap. I'm not worried about it scratching because what the cap does is it's actually stopping the dust from sitting on the surface of the film. Dust is what causes a lot of your scratching, the deeper scratches that don't go away. So I'm going to trim some of this off. I don't have a lot to trim off. But yes, getting rid of dust is really important if you want to have a more scratch-free surface. On top of that, you're going to want a fresh buffer on your squeegee, so one of those blue guys there, because that's going to make a world of difference as well. If yours is dirty and old, it's going to make it, it's going to have, it could cause a possibility of scratching the surface. The actual scratches that the buffer leaves on the surface, those heat out. Those, those will heat out in the sunlight, they'll heat out with a heat gun, whatever you want to do, and it's common with all gloss paints. Any brand, any color. Certain colors show things a little bit differently. That's all. Black, for example. People, a lot of people come to me and they, they ask me about scratches on their gloss black roof wraps. Again, Go, throw it outside if, you're, if the climate's warm enough or hot enough for an hour or so, and they'll be right out. Or you go in there and you do it yourself with a heat gun. Whatever, whatever way you choose, either one will work. So again, I'm gonna remove the back of the paper, and we're just gonna get this situated as flat as possible. Just wrinkle it up. But again, any wrinkles that you cause can be heated out. Just going to fold this up a little bit. Yeah, Mike's getting hot. Let's see a little bit more. There we go. Oh, sorry, it's getting kind of cold in here. My nose is a little bit running. All right. So we're going to flatten this sheet of vinyl out right now. So initial tap is pretty low and it stretches. Already right now it's stretching. So even with the cold, it's still stretching, pushing really nicely. Let's bring it across a little bit more now. Again, I'm just gonna try and do this cold without adding any heat. So one thing I want, would like to mention is that when we're installing heavy metallic films like this, it's very important that you do not overheat and overstretch one area. It will discolor. That is, that is common with Avery, 3M, Vivid, Texas, Orcal, anybody, it doesn't matter. If you overheat and you overstretch a certain area, you're going to cause discoloration. So I'm okay with this right now. So I'm gonna add a little shield guard with it here. And just get that just in off of there a little bit. I'll just wait in the window. And we're gonna start from the center. So again, my squeegee isn't gonna drag with the uh, shield guard on it. Again, if you don't have shield guard, you can get some water. Again, it's just a product I highly recommend. I've been using it for years. I always use it with chrome wraps. I find, I find soap and water leaves a residue that I don't like. So it can, kind of dries out leaves this residue that the vinyl or your squeegee will actually kind of start sticking to.
doing this without any heat, right? Five mil. Twice as thick as anything else in the market, just about. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that, it doesn't mean that you can't use heat. I'm just showing you that even with the thickness of this film, it has pliability, okay? That's kind of the, the important thing that I'm showing you. with the thicker films is that they actually kind of sit on top or elevated on a lot of the stone chips. With the thicker films, what could happen is that you could, um, the film could actually start sitting inside of the stone chips. And so when the film sits inside the stone chips, they become a little more visible. So with these ones, we're gonna pull down. stretching to the edge, I'm really not causing a lot of tension on the edge. You see how I lift it? I just kind of pop it. I pull back towards me and then I just pop it up. It's just I want to get past this or I need to pop this out a little bit. There we go. You can actually just hold it and squeeze it. Having the shield guard on there is, is what's really making it easy for me right now as far as squeezing over top of all these wrinkles. Here's the corner, I'm just going to pull it apart, set it down, squeeze it. Now I have a wrinkle here that I want to get out before I go any further because I creased the film in that spot. But I'm going to show you. It's right here. So let's just pop that up a little bit. And then I'm not going to pull on the film. I'm just going to heat it until it shrinks. You see? I'm going to let that cool for just a second, a couple of seconds. Get my hands off of it. And then just kind of place it down, right? Now we want to squeeze you over some of those while they're warm. And no harm done. Perfect. Let's move on to the other side. I'm going to pull across. As far as I'm going to slip grease on my slide. Let's get some of that shield guard on my squeegee again from the top there. One thing to keep in mind is you don't want to um, heat where you've sprayed any kind of solution on the film. It will leave permanent impressions. So just make sure you kind of wipe it off a little bit at least so that there's no dots of solution on top of, on top of the surface of the film before you heat. So again, I'm just going to pull down those two loose and go away. Level it out a little bit. A little bit that way. Spread it out. Spread it out. And even with, uh, with the edges locked up and stuff like that, the air still squeegees out really well. It's 
It's only afterwards, when we add, start adding heat to the edges, that we're going to start to seal it all up. And that will be right at the very end. That's our last step. So even all of these big bubbles here, squeeze you right over top of those. No glue lines, no creases, just greatness. Guys, let me know how Soren's doing with the camera positioning. I think he's doing a good job. I've been getting some pretty good feedback on, uh, on his help. So. so one thing I also forgot to mention is I like to leave the hood propped or popped open while I wrap. Just, just gives me good access to the edge. Other than that, nothing else. They're so tight fitting that when I tuck the vinyl in very far, the, uh, the vinyl twists. And it doesn't matter if I wrap the hood in Avery or 3M on the Genesis Coupe for whatever reason, and I've done a lot of these cars, probably like 30 of them, in all different vinyls, Vivid, Avery, Hexes, uh, 3M, it doesn't matter. The, the vents twist. So if you have one of these, something to keep in mind. Some stone chips, but nothing crazy. As soon as I do this, I'm just, I'm just kind of giving it a little bit of a preheat. I'm going to pop the hood and then we're going to do the trimming. So one thing I should have done was mask off my vents I don't, I don't mind if I miss a small spot on them, it's my car. Uh, and the car's black, right? So I'm not really gonna, sh not gonna show them. But if this was a customer's car, I would have masked them for sure, just to let you know. Mask off anything that you would be kind of cutting on, which would be those plastic vents. I would kind of be cutting on them. With my car, I'm gonna cut in between the gap that's between the vent and the actual uh, hood itself. And 
and fun trimming in really tight spaces like this. It takes a bit of practice. Especially when you start turning the blade around the corners. The other one, and I'll heat them quick. We're gonna put the hood off for that. I'll heat up the edges for these, and then uh, get them down really tight. And then we're gonna go over underneath the bottom side of the hood. Again, I'm pro if this was a white car, there would be most definitely a very small sliver of paint showing. I have a black car, so I can get away with wrapping my car in like five hours.
we'll have a leaper right around here. We'll sit here. And we'll go over all these edges right now. So when it comes to the corner, again, it's very simple. I'm just gonna leave it like that, actually. Like, these corners are very easy. And on most cars, they're gonna be very easy like that. This way we're not actually drawing any attention to the edge. So there should be no reason for that corner to ever uh, lift up or change or look ugly or get wrinkled or anything like that. So there are three sides to every edge. There's a top, a middle, and a bottom. You want to make sure we do at least three passes. One, two, and three, okay? I always go over the top first, middle, and then bottom. Back here, we'll do this corner over here. Again, I'm just gonna touch a heat, pull it out towards the walls, and then also back towards me. This is gonna cause the vinyl to hug around the ins the bottom side of the uh, corner. As soon as I add a bit of heat, Boom, it wants to shrink itself around the bottom of the corner. Green corners is like my, probably my favorite part of wrapping. Now just to be sure, you can always get in there with a bunch of beads, you know, cook them up a little bit, and make sure it's, you know, just make sure it's solid. If I lift the hood up higher, the fender won't be getting in my way. This is where it is though. For uh, video purposes, so you guys can see everything. Alright, let's go on the other side. And then the front yet. Down to the corner over here, make sure it's nice and the wall, bring it towards the back of the car, and then get it underneath. And then once it's underneath, then we can add the heat. Make sure it's not sticking to anything. And add the heat and let it all curl up right underneath the corner. Okay, so now that that's done, we're gonna get into the cutting of the excess film. Right handed, so I'll just start over here. And I'll start with the back right there. Keep a bit of tension on it. I won't be able to see much here. It's not that important to do it. I'm just the back of my leg on the back side of the foot. the edge, 
of the actual hood, this creates a straight line. So I'm pulling down exactly down in this direction. The whole way across. This keeps the cut very easy. You can note where my finger, my middle finger is relative to the blade. It's right behind it, or in front of it actually. And I use it as a guide, just like I'm drawing or writing my name or something like that, along those lines. Take our little time when we come around the corners. Try to do longer passes so that there's a little bit less movement, less stopping and going again. This keeps the line even more straight. So again, a long pass all the way down if I can. See my body position, I'm getting crouched down just so I can get a better angle. Down here won't matter so much now because it's gonna be more, way more hidden down here, but I'll still make it nice. But again, if you have a hard time down here, it's not a big deal because it's, the most hidden part of the hood, right, usually down this lower section. Once I'm done this, then we're going over one more time with heat to seal everything in, and that's it. And I'll show you everything. All right, so this whole piece comes off as one. It doesn't have to, it's not a big deal. So you're gonna fail if you don't, don't feel this off in one ring. Now we're going over with heat. So here. And we want to be very thorough with this part, okay? This is the last stage. I'm gonna hit that corner really hard just to make sure we've got no pullback or anything at all. No lifting. Kill the vinyl at this point. I'm going to say that your glove matters. This is a very good glove, um, the super glove, and it's a, I think it's a Kevlar based glove, and it's very resistant to heat and glides very, very nicely. Get in there and fill the corner. Just don't bring anything else around it. Like if you have any plastics, stuff like that, you want to be careful. Perfect. So as soon as I wipe this off, we'll get our end result of what it looks like. I'll grab, I'll grab a clean rag and Flash shield guard. I'm not sure how the color is showing in the camera, it's always different. It's never uh, what I see here, but oh, it's nice and glossy. I like it. I would say there's like zero scratches in this at all. As there pretty much should be no scratches because we have the protective cap to keep dust away. And uh, we use the shield guard solution or a lubricated solution to help minimize how many scratches can happen. Still, because I've got some shield guard on there. 
there, but it's fine. We'll do. So it looks a lot nicer than a minute ago. So, sorry, it's so cold. So the, as you can see, the, the, the wrap goes down pretty easily. It's not that difficult to do. Um, it's stretchy and you can get it, you can get all the wrinkles out and stuff like that without using a lot of heat or any at all for the most part. I will install, I think, nearly this whole car without any heat other than the bumper. And the rear bumper, the rear bumper won't need much, it's pretty easy on this car. But the front, one, the front bumper will need some heat. Otherwise, the rest of it's very straightforward and won't need any heat at all. And that's it. I'll do some more DIY videos on this process. And uh, I'm not going to finish it tonight. It's already 9.15. And we just came in to do some late night videos. Get a little action. It's nice and quiet. Guys, if you like the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe button if you want to see what this color looks like on the whole car once I'm done and some more tutorial videos as well. Don't forget a link to the products in the description below and check out the website. I have a subscription available for the website. So ckrapstoronto.com, sign up. We've, we're gonna be giving away stuff in the future. We're gonna be demo, giving away demo products or coming out with, or you'll be the first to know about new products and all kinds of different things. So check it out, subscribe, and that's about it. Again, thank you for watching. Hope this video was informative. Take care.